In this experiment, you will examine the various carbon dioxide equilibria and gain experience in applying Le Chatelier's principle to rationalize your results. If we look at a system, such as carbonated water, that involves a series of chemical equilibria, there may be more reactions happening than one would expect. Visibly, there is an equilibrium between the carbon dioxide that is dissolved in the water and in the gas phase. This is what causes the bubbles coming out of the liquid. However, dissolved carbon dioxide can also react with water to form carbonic acid. This can react with water to form hydrogen carbonate ion or lose a second proton to form the carbonate ion. Le Chatelier's principle is important to know when examining equilibrium systems as it explains how a reaction will react to different changes in a system. If an equilibrium is disturbed, it will shift to counteract the effect of the disturbance. An equilibrium will shift in the direction that allows it to maintain the same K or equilibrium constant. This constant is equal to the concentration of product molecules divided by the concentration of reactant molecules and should remain the same unless the temperature is changed. Aqueous carbon dioxide and water combine to form carbonic acid in an equilibrium reaction. There are several equilibrium steps between. Working from carbonic acid, it can lose a proton and form the hydromyo ion and bicarbonate ions. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is called Ka as a conjugate acid-base pair is involved. Carbonic acid is the acid and bicarbonate is its conjugate base. Bicarbonate has the ability to either gain or lose a proton. If it loses a second proton, acting as an acid, it becomes the carbonate ion, and the constant for the reaction is Ka2. If it regains a proton and acts as a base, it returns to being carbonic acid, and the reverse reaction constant is Kb. Another form of equilibrium is solubility. Solid calcium carbonate dissolves a small amount in water to produce calcium ions and carbonate ions. This equilibrium constant, Ksp, is only the product of the ion concentrations because the reactants are solid and so are not included in the expression. The solubility product is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 9 for this reaction. If the concentration of ions becomes greater than this, the equilibrium shifts away from the side of the reaction where ions are produced or back towards the reactants. This causes the formation of solid calcium carbonate. When performing this experiment, it is important to remember the equilibrium that water forms to a small extent. Water dissociates into its protonated form, the hydronium ion, and deprotonated form, the hydroxide ion, as part of an equilibrium reaction. However, the Kw of the section is only 1 times 10 to the minus 14, so not a lot of a dissociation occurs. It is also important to know how to calculate the pH and pOH. As we have seen before, the pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. Similarly, the pOH of the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ions, and this gives you the pOH. The pH and the pOH add up to 14, just as the product of multiplying the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions together should always equal Kw. In part A of this experiment, you will use a pH meter and the indicator solution, Bromcresol Green, to measure the pH of a solution containing dissolved carbon dioxide. 
To begin, obtain a roughly 25 milliliters of the solution containing carbon dioxide in a 50 milliliter beaker. Add four drops of brown Presol green. This will give you a rough idea of the pH of your solution because the indicator is yellow below a pH of 4 and blue above a pH of about 5.6. Very gently swirl the beaker to mix the indicator into the solution. Measure the pH with a pH meter and record the value to two decimal places. Transfer the solution into a larger 250 milliliter beaker and vigorously swirl the beaker for several minutes. This will cause more carbon dioxide to leave the system and cause a shift in equilibrium towards the reaction side that produces the carbon dioxide gas. When you are swirling the solution, you can let it sit for a while as you perform Part B. When you are finished Part B, measure the pH of the Part A solution a second time. Record the value to two decimal places. Also be sure to record any changes in the color of the solution. In Part B, you will be able to observe directly the effects of adding various stresses to the carbon dioxide equilibrium system. To each separate beaker, add the reagents shown in the slide, in the correct amounts and in the correct order. After each addition, record any observations of what happened to the solution. Remember, having no observable change is still an observation that is worth taking note of. When you are trying to explain the observations that you have made, try to figure out what part of the equilibrium the change will affect. In particular, think about what ions will be produced by the addition of a molecule to a solution. An increase in dissolved carbon dioxide will push the equilibrium towards products to produce the carbonate ion. Calcium chloride will dissociate into calcium and chloride ions in a solution. The calcium ions can then react with carbonate ions to form calcium carbonate, which will cause precipitate to form if the ion concentrations exceed the KSP value when they are multiplied together. The addition of sodium hydroxide contributes hydroxide ions to the solution. These react with hydronium ions, neutralizing them and causing the reaction to shift in such a way that they will be replaced. This will cause a net increase in the concentration of the carbonate ion as the equilibrium shifts to replace the loss of the hydronium ion. This slide shows more clearly what happens when the concentration of something in an equilibrium is reduced. For example, carbon dioxide is lost as a gas into the atmosphere. To replace it, the equilibrium shifts to produce more of it to try and maintain the same equilibrium constant value. It will cost the entire system to shift slightly to try and produce more carbon dioxide, even reactions several steps away. The concentration of the carbonate ion will be reduced as the entire system shifts to produce more carbon dioxide. The addition of sodium hydroxide will have the opposite effect as the hydroxide ions will react with the hydronium ions becoming water. This will cause a shift in the opposite direction towards the production of hydrogen carbonate and bicarbonate ions which will simultaneously cause an increase in the concentration of hydronium. In the final part of this experiment, you will add calcium chloride to two different solutions, sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate, and observe any changes in the solution. To begin, put 25 milliliters of a hydrogen carbonate and carbonate solution 
into two separate 100 milliliter beakers. Measure the pH using a pH meter and record the value to two decimal places. Next, add 25 milliliters of calcium chloride to each beaker and record your observations about what is happened to each. What ions are added from the addition of calcium chloride? How do these ions affect the equilibrium system of the beaker? From the pH values you measured before, adding the calcium chloride to the solution, you can calculate the concentration of hydronium ions in each beaker. From there, you can also calculate the concentration of hydroxide by using the Kw of water. What reactions are happening here that can explain the observations that you make? For this procedure, you will use a one-point calibration of a pH meter. This will be done before measuring the pH of any solution. There are instructional videos available if you would like to see how the calibration is performed ahead of time. To prevent buildup of solids on the probe, it is important to rinse it with water and immerse it in 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution in between measurements. This will be provided for you in jars in the lab. If you have any questions about proper use of the pH meters, you can also ask your lab instructor.